There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high quality, grass fed, and grass finished beef, organic chicken, pork raised crate free, and wild caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at butcherbox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious. And all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips, for free in every order for a year. Plus, get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash etm and use code etm to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, Right. For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Hey friends, Shauna here. And today we're talking about the magical, wonderful world of credit unions with our friend Tamar, who's the VP of Marketing from Westcom Credit Union. I admit, I didn't know a lot about credit unions before we spoke, but I think I've turned into one of the biggest champions. In fact, Tamar thinks credit unions are indeed better than banks, so stay tuned for all the scoops. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. So get this, credit unions are a cooperative banking system. That means that they exist literally to give back to their members or customers, if you will. And there are over 9,000 credit unions in the U.S. I actually had no idea about that. But I think one of the things that makes me so excited, like giddy child excitement when you open up a present on your birthday, you know, that feeling is that credit unions are nonprofits. So what that means is they pass profits back to members in terms of lower fees, better rates, like all the things that you actually care about. And I can't tell you how many times someone emails me saying that their bank either charged them some crazy fee they weren't supposed to pay or how they feel like they're just a number at their bank and they really want to find some place where they can put their money where they feel like a human and feel like people care about them. So you may remember tomorrow from an episode we did in October and we're back for part two to help you really fall in love with credit unions because... I actually do really want to love my bank. I know that sounds crazy, so not in a weird way, but in a really good way. I want to feel really comfortable with where I put my money, and learning about credit unions has really opened my eyes. So I can't wait for you to hear the power of credit unions and maybe even to get you thinking about your own relationship with your bank and really what kind of relationship you do actually want to have. So Tamara, I feel like we're old friends now. Uh, Welcome back to the second podcast episode. Thank you for having me. And uh, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into into credit unions. You know, I we talked a little bit on the first episode that we did together. I'm a little embarrassed to admit it, but up until even just a few years ago, I myself didn't really know the benefit of credit unions. I thought, well, you're just a bank like any other bank. How in the world can you? possibly be that special. But 
credit unions are very different, aren't they? Uh, right. I would. Credit unions are very different than a bank. Um, we're like a bank, but better. <laughs> <laughs> that is the slogan. That's the T-shirt. Um, but um, so credit unions in general, I think, so structurally, um, yeah. we are non-for-profit. And um, any profit we do make as an organization, we pass back to our members who are our shareholders in the form of better rates, um, lower fees, discounts, et cetera. So, um, you know, whereas a for-profit organization pays dividends out to their shareholders, we pay our dividends to our members in the form of better rates. and fees. So in general, credit unions are structured differently than a for-profit organization. Right. So I would imagine like as, as a customer, you have this different feel because like we saw on the, on the first episode we did that somebody will come in to Westcom who had like a birthday or a celebration and people working there will know about it. And I don't remember the last time my bank remembered anything other than like my credit card payment is due or, or you know, s- something like that. Um, and so I would imagine like for a customer, like you, this just the, the feeling that you get is probably this it really does feel a little bit more like, I mean, just Personable. sound cheesy, but yeah, like a family kind of it feeling. It is, yeah. Because it, it truly, you belong to a, a credit union, right? And um, just, you know, I talked structurally, but but we're member first, just given the way we operate. Right. Um, and, and that really translates all the way through to our team members as they interact with our members. Um, so we live it, we breathe it and member first and our, you know, our purpose is to build better lives, to, to help be your partner in achieving your financial dreams. And so, um, you know, it's, it, it's at the very founding principle and structurally for us, but it's carried through with every interaction. And so when you, even when you step into the branch, um, we really make it an effort to get to know you, um, and help. You know, partner and make sure we're providing you the service and meeting your needs. And yeah, so I know you've been here for for like thirteen years and you kind of risen up the ranks. But did you know a lot about credit unions before you started here? Actually, you- no. I'd have to admit that I myself did not know. Um, <laughs> and so we joke and say best kept secret, right? Right. <laughs> um, and um, you know, when I was interviewing and I got called for my interview, um, I you know decided to do some research and I realized wait a minute, I've been banking where? Like, how did right. I not know about a credit union? And and really there's this misconception that you have to belong to some employer group mm. or- Yeah, I was going to ask you. To, yeah. to open an account, right? So you have to belong to the teachers right. uh, or be a teacher in the or administrative mm. or a uh, faculty um, to open an account. But with Westcom, we're unique in the sense that we're community-based. So we serve Southern California, which means anyone in Southern California can open an account. So um, so you don't necessarily have to belong to a specific employer group to be a member of a credit union. Interesting. Yeah, I was going to ask you because I always had this idea that, yeah, I had to be in this like specific niche or, you know, somehow qualify. Or you don't qualify. <laughs> exactly. And then you sort of feel like you got left out of the party. Um, yeah, so it, it's good to know. And then, you know, I'm, I'm curious just even about like credit unions in general, because I know a lot of our listeners kind of all around the U.S., you know, have access to lots of different credit unions and maybe they 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 don't know, um, you know, other than like structural wise, like what are some of the the features that credit unions even in general just kind of offer you that are that are different than so it's all the conveniences and products and services that you would find elsewhere, uh, your credit union most likely offers. Right. Um, so whether it's um, just really robust online and mobile banking. Um, I think another misconception is sometimes, oh, my credit union is just a small com- yeah. neighborhood credit union. They're not going to be able to. They like, don't offer yeah. um, check depo- you know, the ability to be able to deposit my check remotely right. from my phone. Right. They can't beat that um, or, technology advance. Right. Yeah. Or the other thing is, well, there's not a branch near me, so it's not convenient. But um, one of the nice things about a credit union, and we're, we're cooperative in nature. And so, um, for example, ATM, um, you know, you might not be walking into a branch that often, but you're certainly using your debit card, withdrawing cash from an ATM. Well, 
for example, at Westcom, you have access to 30,000 ATMs wow. nationwide. And if you just to put that in perspective at uh, maybe another national bank, their average would be 3,000 ATMs nationwide. Really? That big so, of a difference. Right. And so what it is, is cooperatively credit unions mm. come together to share their ATM network so that as a consumer, you just have more convenient access. So it's it's certain things like that, like, whoa. It is convenient after all. Um, yeah, because I, I often joke about the like a black hole in um, your bank account because everybody has like something they spend money on that's sort of like the sinkhole where, um, you know, the bottom just kind of goes out and they don't know how much they're actually spending. For most people, it's eating out because right. we don't like to For like that even Starbucks visit. Yeah, figure <laughs> out like how much how much we're spending our money on. But I also find like a trend in um, ATM fees. Because people are like, well, I don't really know how to like categorize that on my budget. So I just kind of leave that out. But I mean, I've seen people who've had like hundreds of dollars a month just in those silly ATM fees from, you know, using ATMs around. So, I mean, when you start talking about 30,000 ATMs, like, I mean, that could be like a sizable Absolutely. And if we're talking about like people having a tough time being able to save money, like I often say it's all these little, little things that yeah, these up. little expenses and something like that could be, you know, I mean, because every time I have to go to an ATM and I don't have like, for instance, this is really lame to admit, but when I get my nails done, they don't take uh, you can't do a tip unless it's cash. And I'm like this terrible person that never <laughs> has cash on me. So they have an ATM there. So I always have to use the ATM. And I'm like, every time I'm like, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm like this financial person. Here I am spending $3.75 right, right. on the stupid ATM yeah. fee. And sadly, there's probably one around the corner that's like <laughs> got that credit union symbol on it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, yeah, 30,000, it's, it's super convenient and easy to find. And so it just saves you I mean, money at the end. Yeah, at the right. end of the day. So, and I also like I know something that you guys do at Westcom a lot, and I would imagine maybe this is a credit union uh, theme as well. Is that you offer a lot of like educational opportunities that are free, which are great because I think then you know that allows someone to maybe like baby step into um, you know something they want to learn about. Absolutely. So really making sure we're committed to helping you achieve your financial goals. And that's part of our, what we do. Um, so whether it's buying your first home, um, your first car, learning how to save for retirement, social security, or maybe you have a parent who is mm, yeah. about to, um, you know, enter some, like you've got to make some living trust decisions, etc. So, Throughout all our branches, we do offer free workshops that help address some of these questions, and we bring in the experts, and it's a non-commitment type of thing. It's come in and just start with getting to know the lay of the land and educate yourself and yeah. ask ask the experts who can guide right. you in the right direction. So yeah. um, we do have those options. And if you can't make it in a branch, we also offer a free financial uh, website where you can go and just view modules and um, gain information, watch a quick video, um, and kind of get ahead your head around um, some of these financial questions you might have. Right. Yeah. Very, very like friendly for people who don't want to show their face right, in the bank. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, we've got another Ask Shauna, and this one comes from Jasmine. And Jasmine says, I've been listening from almost the beginning of the podcast. Thanks so much for the show. Really, you've been that little voice in my head through some really tough times in my life. I lost my job last year and had to focus on money and my thoughts around money for the first time. I would listen to your episodes and feel like you were a friend there with me. When I did get a new job, I nervously negotiated for a higher salary again with you in my head. And guess what? I got it. And I gave you a super secret high five. I give you a lot of super secret high fives, actually. You helped me figure out how to afford a wedding with my fiance next year and what costs to really focus on. We're getting ready to move in together next year, and I'm back asking for some advice. I know you've done a ton of podcasts on relationships and money, and I've been bookmarking them all. But I'm curious, since I'm going to have some downtime around the holidays, I wanted to ask my fiance some money questions, but in a fun way without feeling all stressed out and stuff. 
Any good conversation starters you could send my way would be awesome. Thanks again so much. I really appreciate the podcast, and I'm sure others do as well. Jasmine, you are a rock star. This is such a great question. And thank you so much for really sharing all of that with us. I love that I can be the little voice for you and the secret high fives are pretty pretty cool. I think, what are we if we can't create community for each other? All of us involved in this show, listening to the show. That's why I love these Ask Shauna questions. Not that I have all the answers, but that we really are creating this community and somebody else out there probably has the same question or is wondering the same thing. So, Just a gentle reminder to anyone who has a question, don't feel shy or embarrassed. There are no bad questions. You can send it in and let us know that you want to keep your name anonymous. That's perfectly fine. But I think this is how we create community and we can all see that a lot of these money issues or things we might struggle with or questions we might have, a lot of other people have the exact same questions. So we're not alone in this thing. Okay, Jasmine. So you're getting married next year, which is awesome. 2020, I think, has this ring to it. So what a great year to have for your wedding and and anniversaries. Okay. You ask about conversation starters. Those are actually some of my favorites. I'm going to give you some ideas, but I want you to have fun with these. Talking about money with your partner, it just, it shouldn't be hard. And I think a lot of times it does feel hard. I, even some of the conversations that I have with, with Jeff, they kind of start out a little like, and I don't, know what I want to say or how I want to say it. But I think once you get those words out, then it starts to become easier to do these things. So the hardest part, just like anything, is starting. It's that first word. It's it's asking that question. It's suggesting some sort of change. Whatever it is, that's always the hardest part. So set the scene however you want to do it. It could be casual. It could be romantic with a beverage at the park with some snacks, bake some cookies. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just make it feel comfortable. Make it feel like your relationship. So here are some questions. I love these questions. I have asked these to not just Jeff, but to many people that I have dated in my past. So these are some fun ones. Okay. The first one is don't think. Someone drops a million dollars in your bank account. What's the first thing you're going to do? That's always a fun question. Number two, what would you do if you didn't have to work for money? That is also a very fascinating and revealing question. Think about that one one for yourself. Number three, what was your very first memory around money? Number four, what is the craziest thing you've ever done for money? Number five, if you could describe your money as a superhero, what would it be and why? Number six, You can invest in the hottest stock. You have a 60% chance of hitting it big and 40% chance of losing your money. What do you choose? Number seven, what is the best purchase you've ever made? What is the worst purchase you've ever made? Number eight, what is the first lesson you remember around money? And number nine, what role do you want money to play in your life? These are just some examples. Make them your own. Also, I provide transcripts for every episode, so if you head on over to bit.ly slash MMP Credit Union, I'll have that in the show notes, you can get a transcript that has all of these questions so you don't have to remember them or hit pause constantly, so I'll make it super easy for you. And if you haven't asked Shauna, jump on over to our website, mmoneypodcast.com, and enter your question right on the homepage or just click over on the show notes to follow the link. But have fun with these questions, Jasmine. Let them be, again, like just conversation starters. Let them take you wherever they want to go. And the most important thing is not to attach any judgment to what your partner says. Let them feel like they can answer these questions however they want. I think that's really important when we're talking about relationships and money. So continue being you, and I'm so happy that I get to be the little voice for you. Here's to hoping that someday we actually do get to high five in person. Financial anxiety, anyone? Yeah, you're not alone. But worrying about it, it doesn't help. Earnin does. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. You just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck. Then you can access up to $100 per day 
as you work and leave an additional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. So how would you spend the money you get from Earnin? Well, honestly, my hubby and I have been feeling a little bit disconnected lately. That's what happens after you've been together about 12 years. So I would spend the money on a special date night with dinner and maybe bowling, you know, to bring back some of that giggly excitement that we both felt at the beginning. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security, gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R-N-I-N, in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in Talkin, T-A-L-K-A-N, money under podcast when you sign up. It will really help the show. Talkin money under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank & Trust, member FDIC. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news? Well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps. But I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built-in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. <laughs> I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Hi, I'm Karina Bemisterfer, host of Morning Cup of Murder, your daily true crime podcast. Yes, you heard me right. Daily true crime. Every day, Morning Cup of Murder tells you a straightforward, short-form story about murder, true crime, cold cases, disappearances, serial killers, cults, and more. And I do that all in under 15 minutes. With over three years of stories and over 20 million downloads, the Morning Cup of Murder podcast has become a staple of so many people's daily routines. So, why not add it to yours? Stream Morning Cup of Murder everywhere you listen to podcasts, and remember, stay safe. Everyone knows that putting money aside in savings is really important. But then what? Should you keep your savings locked in a CD for a higher rate, or keep them liquid in a money market? Can your checking account help you save too? Or is it about creating the right combination? 
We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about the savings options that are right for you. Learn more at sandyspringbank.com. Member FDIC. I'm kind of curious because we're in this this evolution of banks where particularly a lot of younger people are saying, like, I don't want to do their traditional bank or I feel like they're making too much money off of me or whatever it may be. And they're really looking for different alternatives. And of course, there's like a rise in the like financial technology sector of these different like online banks. And I would imagine like credit unions are really sort of in that that upswell as well. Like, what do you think even the next few years like is going to look like for for credit unions? Are they going to like evolve, you know, maybe more so so that they can catch that that segment? I'd say, you know, speaking from my credit union, you know, really making sure that kind of downplaying some of those taboos that people might have and un- having a better understanding of, you know, that innovation is part of your credit union and um, you can offer or find ways to uh, achieve your financial goals, yeah. whether it's through mobile. So um, making sure that credit unions are, you know, staying up to beat with that and uh, sharing that information with their members um, and also we're finding a trend that, you know, it's not just about opening an account to park your money or, you know, get a loan, but it's truly finding an organization that like cares about the things you care about aligning with your values. Um, whether it's a foundation that they might have that gives back to the communities they serve to, you know, maybe they're helping directly make your life better with your finances, but also the community you live in because they're giving and participating in community events and just, um, helping overall. So I think those are kind of the two trends that, uh, we're seeing, especially with our younger consumers and millennials, um, and I think it's important for you to ask those questions of your organization too and see if it aligns um, with your values. And is it, do they really care about me? Well, yeah. okay, here's their track record. Here are all the things they're doing. Yeah, that's really smart because we don't ask questions where we where we put our money. We're just kind of like, well, we'll just put it wherever. And and having that that dialogue, I think, I mean, you you have the right to have that conversation. And, 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 and you curious. have choices. So right. absolutely ask the questions and make sure it's uh, you find the right choice and the smarter, smarter choice for you or the better way to um, do your banking. So yeah. And you talk about like that community aspect, which I think for a lot of people who aren't in a credit union are kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, everyone likes to throw away, throw around that word, you know, community, community. But y- you guys are actually like, really involved in the community. Are Can you point to like any examples sure. of like different things that sure. you guys have done or doing? Or- so I'll give you an example. Um, last year alone, um, we appeared at over 200 community events throughout our specific Southern California communities. And um, all sorts, whether it's a festival um, where we pop up and share Westcom kindness. Um, and Westcom kindness is, you know, our acts of random kindness in our communities. So ah, we surprise like and the, delight. Like the uh, Honda. A, a little bit. <laughs> but you're probably way cooler with it. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got um, our community involvement when it, when it comes to the 24 branch locations Another community that we partner with um, is our UCLA community. So we're the official banking partner for UCLA athletics, alumni, faculty, and staff. And so, you know, we're really partnering and making sure we're there early on for the students, providing financial education, giving them the tools they need. And so, and then we've got our charitable foundation. I can't leave them out. So we have (laughs) our We Care uh, Charitable Foundation and um, our team members give towards the fund and get to come together and decide which non-for-profit organizations we want our dollars to go to and support. And um, that's something we're very proud of. As an organization, 79% of our employees are donating to our We Care Fund. Wow, that is mm-hmm. actually pretty that shocking. That is actually yeah. why I am in jeans today. So <laughs> <laughs> so when we uh, collectively hit a certain 75 uh-huh. and above in contributions to We Care, we get Jeans Day as an organization to celebrate. So uh, also a nice thing for us here. So. Right. Enjoy. Yeah. So then the, obviously then the employees become like in a credit union, like the employees become part of the giving. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, the, that just helps with like that whole connection piece, I would imagine. Yep. Yeah. I'm curious uh, if, if someone does belong to a credit union, 
I would imagine that there are uh, maybe common threads. Maybe you see this here of like people not realizing that you offer certain things, whether mm-hmm. it's products or services. Are there any like commonalities that you can point to that maybe somebody that belongs to a credit union might not realize that a credit union has or does or? Let's see. Oftentimes, if you're not a credit union member, your first um, kind of misconception would be belonging to a certain employer group. Mm, And knowing that there are community-based credit unions like Westcom that, you know, so long as you live in the community, you're welcome to open an account. Um, But if you belong, it's knowing, you know, things like the depth of accounts and services they have, the free financial seminars and educations I talked about, that's unique. Um, But even knowing that, oh, they do home loans or maybe they do some pretty cool home loans. So Mm, we've got some adjustable rate options that are pretty unique to us, like a 1515 adjustable, which oh, isn't wow. offered, you know, at most what institutions. Is that? So you have an adjustable rate right. for 15 years that helps you maybe enjoy a lower rate right. and then it locks in. And so learning about some um, maybe options that are pretty um, different and unique um, and not necessarily offered, um, you know, across the board at other right. institutions um, those are kind of neat things to at least our credit union and other options. So, for example, we have insurance services, we have investment services. So it's truly a full service experience. Um, it's not just where I open an account, maybe get an auto loan. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so you should if you belong to a credit union or you belong to West Gold, like you should ask questions, right? I mean, that should be part of of the of the process even if you're thinking you're just going to open a bank account or maybe you just have a bank account. Ask know? questions. Yeah. Ask questions um and you know, if you're in the branch, the staff's there and committed to you. So, you know, ask them, "Hey, uh, what else do you offer?" of course. Um and they'll kind of talk to you specific to your needs. Um download their mobile app. Most institutions oh, yeah. have the mobile <laughs> app, and so convenience is like Finding an ATM right. near you because it's geo, tar- you know, based on your geo location. So you'll know, oh, there's one right around the corner. That's fee free. You know, yeah. things like that. I think um, you might take for granted that it maybe perhaps a credit union could be smaller in scale, and you're thinking they don't offer it, but uh, they probably do. Yeah. Are there any? Um, since you're in marketing, are there any like cool tech things that you're kind of developing uh, for the app or? Uh, so we are working on developing our own, well, not our own, but partnering with yeah. Zelle. Um, yeah, okay. So, you know, just making payments a little easier for you to, ta- you know, so pay your friends when you go out for right, dinner yeah. and just transfer the money in like real time. Right. So we're, you know, working hard to get that released for our members. Um, just cool things on our mobile app, like endlessly uh, security features too. I can't mm, even right, tell you right. all the security features, but just um, facial recognition to log in, um, you know, oh, or really? the thumbprint. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you know. yeah. Those are like, you know, I would say really cool, um, just conveniences that just make my life easier. I know I use those <laughs> things all the time. <laughs> and then the ATMs are, I can't even say how like useful that is. Right. So overall. So, so I want to ask you kind of, kind of like last question. If, if there's one thing that people should remember about the power of credit unions, What do you think that is? I'd say as a credit union, uh, the cooperative nature of a credit union and the founding principles of just giving back um, and helping members achieve a better life. I think those are the two things, the cooperative nature that makes your life easier, the things like the ATM network being more accessible to you, um, and then the structural um, nature of the credit union where they pass back their savings for you, um, in the form of better rates and fees so that, you know, you truly are making a smarter banking decision. Yeah. I love, I love that cooperative. I love that partner. Like that's a real, the connection I think is, is certainly something like at least in my life at this point that I really value. And I would imagine that, that a lot of other people love that to just feel, like they belong somewhere rather than just being this number, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tamara, this has been great. Again, I'd love for you to tell listeners where they could go to find out more about Westcom. Sure. Um, So you can find more information at westcomtogether.com and Westcom is without a T. So W-E-S-C-O-M. 
Um, and then you can also follow us on our social media pages uh, on Instagram. We're at underscore Westcom and Facebook. It's Westcom Credit Union. The biggest takeaway from this episode, I think, is that, again, you should be happy with your bank. It's so fascinating that we don't even spend time thinking about the place that we put our money. We just look around, choose some bank, some name that we're familiar with, and that's the place we put our money. And we're, of course, trusting that they're doing the best things with our money, that they're good ethical people and all sorts of things. And I'm not saying that banks are not that way. But I'm definitely excited that people are looking for other alternatives, whether it's online banks or credit unions, someplace where you just feel like you're taken care of and you also feel like a person, like there are people there to help you with your financial goals. So I I think in the words of Marie Kondo, your bank should actually spark joy. You should actually feel really good about them. So if you want to learn more about Westcom Credit Union, head to westcom.org for all the information. You can find all of their locations as well. And hey, thanks so much for checking out this episode. We're really trying here to just change our language around money to help others unlock the lives they want to live and live it out with purpose. Now that you're part of this movement, it's up to all of us to invite others into this journey. So please share this episode with someone you think that is really ready to make life changes that they're never going to look back on. Let's talk about money, all of us, in a good way, in a fun way. And don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. I'll see you back here in a few days for a brand new one.